You ready? I'm ready. All right, Aaron's rolling, so we, uh, we'll we play an intro song, and then we'll go. We don't actually play the intro <laughs> song. I say that, and then he'll play it. All right, podcast audience, thank you so much for being with us again. A uh, very special guest today, my friend John Nadler is here. John, uh, maybe introduce yourself and, and what you do and where you're at. Yeah, good morning, Andrew. John Nadler, I'm the regional account lead for Greenleaf Genetics. Uh, I get the opportunity to represent the uh, the traits um, that come into and genetics that come into Master's Choice. So appreciate the uh, the business that you guys do with us and the relationship that we have as well. Same here, John. How long have you been? How long have you been with Greenleaf? So I've been with Greenleaf for seven years. Um, prior to that, was with Syngenta. I've been with Syngenta now fifteen years, but um, worked in the seed business and crop protection business, and now in the licensing business with Greenleaf. So, been a good run. Very cool. Uh, so you were talking about you know representing traits and trait packages. Uh, at this point in time, right now, how many different unique trait packages is Syngenta Greenleaf offering? Yeah, so we currently offer our licensees, I think there's 11 different uh, trait packages on our price card. So, you know, and there's a few of those that are, are higher demand than others, but I guess the, um, the reason for 11, Andrew, is just choice, right? All yeah. farmers don't want the same thing. So we, um, we've, it's, it's a maybe a little bit more difficult, but we've chose to offer more trait classes um, to you, our licensees, then can and turn around and put them in in the hands of farmers of those 11 at this point in time you know and maybe even let's let's, let's look at this historically of those 11 historically the last three to five years what has been kind of the the top seller the most in-demand product yeah i would say agrisure viptera you know and the the trait classes that it represents i mean that that technology has been so effective in the marketplace, and we're continuing to ramp it up in above ground easy refuge options, um, now representing close to 50% of our portfolio. And that's wow. really where the market's at. I mean, the, the corn earworm protection, the black cutworm protection, uh, western bean cutworm protection, second to none, leader in the industry. So yeah. that's been, uh, been extremely effective, and, and honestly, it's what growers have been looking for. And okay, so if we, you know, three to five years, we looked at where are sales trending now? Where do you see that being in the future? Yeah, it's continuing to go up. So there's a number of things driving the above ground only easy refuge or rib, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, the economy has forced growers to, to maybe stop using as much above and below ground. They've tried to cut costs and go to above ground only. Um, then also there's guys that's been at single trait stacks potentially a, a straight GT or a GT CBLL that's a refuge type product and they've moved up into that easy refuge so it's blended in the bag. Um, mm -hmm. So that market is continuing to grow representing about 60, 63 percent of the market today. Wow. Uh, you kind of mentioned talking about that that guy that was planting uh, GT only which you know stands for glyphosate tolerance correct? Correct. Uh, is do you think there's still a place in today's market for that guy that just wants the GT only, or would you maybe encourage him to look at higher trait stacks? You know, that's a good question. So I, I would ask the grower probably some more questions first before I would give advice. But, you know, if he's planting straight GT for a reason, um, I want to hear that reason. But ultimately, if, if I'm after preserving yield, and that, tr in my opinion, is what insect traits do is they preserve yield, um, I'm going to steer that that grower towards an Agrisure Viptera type product or an Agrisure Duracade type product, something that's going to give you insect control and preserve the yield of the genetics that he's selected. You know, and straight GT does have its place, whether it's a, a structured refuge product or maybe it's an acre that's just really not that profitable, but you've got to have corn on it. Um, so there's all kinds of different circumstances, but um, – you know, there's, we see more and more people moving away from straight GT and going to pyramided traits just because of the, the insect protection. So you think that's, that's the trend going forward is fewer people doing the GT only and more people moving into more of a stacked insect trait? Exactly. So we, we've seen it. Um, market data or third-party market share data shows us that, that that is continuing to shrink, um, that straight GT acre 
or around a pretty acre, whatever you want to call it. There's just, there's more and more people going to pyramided traits. So therefore they don't need the structured refuge product, um, or they don't need, or they, they want more insect protection. So they're going from a GT up into a, an Agrisher, Viptera, Agrisher, Duracade type trait. This this was not on the list of uh, pre-approved questions, so I'm going to go off book here for a second. So I hope that's all right. I'm good with that. Um, with Master's Choice and, and our audience uh, for this podcast being mostly dairy focused, uh, in the dairy industry, uh, you know, these guys have got to have feed. So even if, even if there's, a, you know, a crop failure, you know, like crop insurance isn't that big of a boon to them because they've got to have feed to, to feed their animals to keep their business alive. Uh, maybe speak to, you know, like these guys that have to go corn on corn, you know, a dairy guy has to go corn on corn sometimes maybe more than others, just because, uh, just because of that need to have feed and, and have that corn silage. Uh, what would your advice, you know, with these trait stacks and, and be to them as they're going corn on corn and as they're trying to have that insurance that they need to make sure they have a crop to feed? Yeah. So, uh, and you, you said a key word there, in my opinion, that's insurance, right? He's got cows standing there that's going to be waiting um, to be fed. And he, so he cannot afford to lose a crop. Yeah. Um, so insurance is key. And you can think of insurance as something that you go buy and put on that crop, or you can think of, of agrisure traits as potential insurance. So, you know, well, let's take your corn on corn situation where the guy is really potentially at risk for, uh, for rootworm damage. Um, Agrisure Duracade is going to bring absolutely superior control on corn rootworm. Now, realistically, there's no technology that's bulletproof. So we want to manage that technology as best we can. Um, pyramided traits have helped, but granular insecticide is always a good option as well to make sure to give you that insurance policy that you're looking for. So whether it's whether it's pyramided traits with more than one mode of action, whether it's granular insecticide, um, that gives you the best control that you can have below ground. You come above ground, um, products like Agrisure Viptera, um, truly controlling Western bean cutworm and truly controlling corn earworm. Um, that keeps the bug frass out of the end of an ear, which causes uh, aflatoxins and mycotoxins to build. And when that happens, we all know that if that gets in a cow, um, milk goes down the ditch and, and that just, that can't happen. So that's where Agrisure Viptera brings you a different level of insurance, uh, to preserve that yield, preserve the genetics, preserve the milk, preserve the feed that you're feeding to the animal. It's a, that's a good segue, John. We were talking about insurance and, and I, I personally think, you know, like what, you know, you, you said, you know, insurance can be a product that you buy, or it can be, you know, these, these higher trade stacks that give you a more likelihood in your field of that extra insurance. And I would say that of our audience, you know, 10 out of 10 of those would rather see the, they would rather spend a little bit more on that trait and have that insurance in the field than they would uh, take their chances on maybe getting a check back for that and then having to find feed for their animals. Uh, so, so using that thought, thought process of ensuring that we get the best stand of corn that we can as we're feeding these animals, uh, how big of a role do you think seed treatments play in that? And, and how important are, you know, you know, you guys have outstanding seed care options. Maybe talk about traits and how important that is to that package. Yeah. So, you know, Syngenta's seed care space is, is truly important. You know, and let's be honest, a lot of farmers look at seed treatment as, well, it's colored. So, therefore, <laughs> I have seed treatment, right? And and that, honestly, that's true. It's very much the case. Now, realistically, though, um, there is significant differences in your seed care package. And that seed care although sometimes hard to see it could be a two to three bushel yield advantage. It could be a difference in getting an established stand versus replant. It could be a difference in um, bug pressures that could cause an avenue for a disease to enter into that plant later on in life. So there's a number of different things that your seed care package can do to make sure that you get an established stand and off to a good start. Cause that is such a key right now. You kind of you're you're kind of teasing a little bit about like the uh, you know the farmers just know that it's colored and I, I don't know how many times I've you know what oh what's your seed care package I have no idea the red one right you know the green one which you know doesn't actually equate to anything but do you think that farmers give enough credit to the seed care to the end product or do you think maybe they're almost a little 
uh, just conditioned to like it works and they just almost take it for granted that it's going to work. Yeah, I, th- I think it's both. Um, they take it for granted that it's going to work. But honestly, that's you're in my job, right? It's, yeah. it's you're in my job to select the right product to put on that to mitigate the risk for that grower. Um, a, a dairy farmer has so many different irons in the fire. Uh, probably not going to worry about his seed treatment. Um, that's that's you're in my job to make sure that we bring the best seed treatment to him that's going to preserve his his genetics that he has underneath it. Yeah, well spoken. Uh, shifting gears just a little bit here now, I, I think that uh, from my part, you know, we've talked about the unique traits. We've talked about seed, you know, seed care and seed treatments. And uh, for my part, you know, I think that Master's Choice is very proud to offer uh, Greenleaf Syngenta products in those departments just because the the e- efficacy has been proven to be so good and it's worked out so well for us. Uh, us as an independent seed company, it seems like uh, it seems like you guys, uh, you know, Greenleaf, it seems like you are licensing out traits to multiple independent companies. And maybe uh, maybe just talk about maybe how many independent companies you guys work with and, and how important that is to you. Yeah. So for me personally, I work with uh, 27 different licensees covering the southeast region of the U.S. Um, my entire team, we represent about 150 total independent yeah. seed companies. And to us, independent seed companies are extremely important because that's solely who we work with, right? So I'm going to be a little bit biased (laughs) towards independent seed companies. But, you know, as I look at Master's Choice, for example, of of one of the 27 that I call on, your ability to meet the needs of what your growers are, are very significant. You know, and I know I've used this analogy with you before, Andrew, but if you take a uh, take a ski boat and put it out in the middle of the lake its agility is very awesome right it can move yeah. one way or the other and you know you can move around quick i think independent seed companies are very much like a ski boat um if you look at at national companies and then syngenta has national companies and they're great fits as well but their their nimbleness is not near what yours are so when it comes to your ability to meet your needs of a customer in a timely way. And and sometimes like right now in this economy, it's quite different. So you've got to be nimble to meet their needs. And I think that's where you can truly shine. Independent seed companies are extremely effective in meeting the needs of growers and um, being able to move and, and come to what their needs are. So that, you're kind of already addressing my next question here. You, you feel like uh, as the industry shifts and changes and there's been, you know, it's a different industry now than when I started for sure. And I'm, I'm, heck, I'm not that old and haven't been in it that long. But uh, you feel like the future for independence is still uh, important and it's important to preserve, you know, the, all those different options and not maybe consolidate down. I do. You know, the consolidation in our business is very real. You know, if there's anything that we've seen in the last few years, it's been industry consolidation in ag, right? And I yeah, think that's, in general. I think that's going to continue. I'd be naive to say that there's not going to continue to be called consolidation. Now, reality is, is the independent seed companies such as yourself that that is is doing business different today than what they were five years ago, what they were ten years ago. Um, you're making the changes that need to be made for a sustainable business. Um, if an independent seed company is not willing to make changes, it could be difficult. You know, same way for a farmer, though, too. Um, you can't manage the same today that you did five to ten years ago. Unfortunately, that's just that just don't work. Yeah. So kind of to 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 summarize this part of our conversation, if you, if you, John, were a, a customer, a, a seed customer, a farmer today, what would you be looking for as you picked a seed company? And then maybe what advice you would give, kind of cor- correlate with that, what advice you would give to a listener that's maybe going through those decisions right now? Yeah. So number one, it's, um, it's finding that seed company that can meet my needs. You know, if, if I'm a dairy farmer, I'm thinking about, uh, digestion. I'm thinking about standability. I'm thinking about agronomics. I'm thinking about a number of things. Uh, if I'm a number two grain farmer, um, I'm thinking about test weight. I'm thinking about population. I'm thinking about standability. So number one, I'm going to find that seed company that fits my needs. Number two, um, once I find that seed company, I need a relationship with that company to the level that they're going to recommend the right things for me, not necessarily the right thing from coast to coast, 
but what's going to fit dad's North 40, right? That's, mm-hmm. that's the most important. Um, there's a difference. Everybody's got good seed corn. Um, everybody's got good technology. Everybody's got good seed care. But when we match up the best genetics, the best traits, the best seed care on the best acre for the end outcome of what that grower's looking for, that's a true win. And ultimately, it takes some really good relationships to be able to do that. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better myself as a perfect way to, to wrap up our, our conversation. John, you did it. You made it through the interview. Well, uh, you know, maybe maybe C plus, B minus type student, which, you know, <laughs> I thought was, whatever. It was great. <laughs> well, John, it was good to see you again. Um, podcast audience, if you have any questions on uh, seed care or traits or, or how Master's Choice is delivering those, uh, hit us up on social media. Um, you can get on uh, AgriSure has a website, correct? Yep. Yep. You can go to www.agrisuretraits.com and learn about learn about our technology. You know, and, and the only thing I would leave you with, Andrew, is is right now the business is um, extreme, extremely stressed due to economy, due to COVID, due to a number of different things. And you know, continue to lean on people in the industry for information um and you know work through these challenges we do appreciate american farmers there's nothing better than in my opinion and i'm glad to be able to represent agriculture in the u.s today perfect uh podcast audience come back in two weeks we'll have another episode and uh and and we thank john for coming on thanks buddy appreciate the opportunity 